is our representative, uh, um, uh, High Commissioner, um, Vice Admiral Mohan Vijayvikrama, is saying this nonsense instead of actually holding. I mean, if if there were credible action done by the Pakistani government, except the statements or any, anything, then we can actually say yes, this is happening. But we need to tell them we are watching. But this doesn't communicate that. This says okay, fine, we understand. It's a, it's a mistake. It's okay. I think uh, how uh, you have beeped the statement coming from our representative, the envoy in Pakistan, uh, is rather in a very uh, light manner, an expression uh, falling short of the country's concerns, yeah. not getting reflected in that expression. I think it's, uh, in my opinion, and being the foreign minister of this country, and we have met uh, several issues like this in the past, first uh, step should be to engage at the level of the Prime Minister of Pakistan and that of our Foreign Minister in Sri Lanka, expressing the concerns on the failure of the Pakistan law enforcement authorities to prevent this occurrence when it is happening on the streets of a large city, on an industrial city, where our Sri Lankan worker or the employee is being brutally murdered in broad streets? daylight on the street. And it went on for a while, this episode. No one stepped in. Where did the law enforcement uh, arm fail here? Now, that's something that the first step should be to have a bilateral with the Pakistan Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister and the Interior Minister and get their system failure that has affected and that has victimized uh, Sri Lanka. And our faith in the system is getting dented. Because we have so many others working in Pakistan. Yes. So that is an area that we are, as a country, make use of this occasion. We have to step into. Next time, another person can help. Mm. And they might victimize the countries like Sri Lanka because we don't have the... We have the Buddhists going there. We have the Hindus going there. Maybe the Indians also may get victimized because they, are, they may target the ones who are not culturally adaptable to them. So it's a fear that as a nation, as a country, we must communicate to the authority. They'll be very well receptive if we express ourselves properly and in the most serious manner. Why I say we need an involvement with the investigation as well. That is how countries work. When, if they, when there's an American get uh, mm. targeted in Sri Lanka, uh, they will always send a special representative in order to see into the investigation to what degree the, that life is getting uh, safeguarded in terms of respect to his right to live. That is getting eroded. If we just say, okay, let any investigation come out and let the process take its course, then where are our people going to be safeguarded in terms of the constitution right that we have parted down them in terms of our constitution that they have a right to life. So therefore, that is why we have a consular service. We next day. Even a person committing a crime in a foreign soil is the responsibility of the foreign ministry to safeguard his interest till such time he is judged in the process of uh, due process of the law in that given country. Several times I have stepped in to seek uh, committing of sentences, death sentences in the Middle Eastern yes. countries to the Sri Lankans who have got into the process in which they have been uh, past the death sentence because we don't believe in the death sentence in Sri Lanka. So we think that they have a right to life irrespective of the crime but the degree of crime maybe those countries have their sovereignty in terms of how they deal with uh, certain punishments but still we have to step into this picture. So I think the government of Sri Lanka right now must uh, meet up with the highest level of the Pakistani authorities immediately and be part of this process because it will help including the Prime Minister's government of uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan's government. Because he's getting threatened by this new element. Mm. The fundamentalist Isla uh, element that is getting into the political makeup of Pakistan. Once it starts spreading its winds, the countries in the region will get threatened thereafter. That is extremism getting built up through political processes. And that is very easy to spread the elements of faith, canvas on it bring the religious connotations, work in terms of extremist beliefs, and no debate is available within certain frameworks of certain religions, and thereby you dictate it to the people, and people will have to swallow it. 
And this type of terrorist attacks, this type of threatening processes, this type of humiliation given to the given to an individual in broad daylight, when the officials arm is just observing, just witnessing it without doing any action, will only encourage the process. So I think as a law-abiding society, Sri Lankans, we have to see that that stops there. And we also have to share our own strengths uh, with our friendly country, uh, with that of Pakistan. And these as a Sark fraternity, as uh, Dr. went on to mention at the beginning, uh, our foreign ministers should advise themselves, uh, both in uh, Sri Lanka and also in the, uh, the context of the Sark countries. There are eight countries in the Sark uh, community. And thereby, take this matter forward. And that will help even religious extremism getting built up in Sri Lanka. Whatever religion they may be belonging to, why should we permit religious yes. connotations to be part of the process of governance in this country in terms of extremism, in terms of extremism. So that is something we have to put a stop out of this very sad experience we now we are going to in share here. <laughs>